Imagine you're a pharaoh, ruling over the desert and fighting mummies for 100 days. On day one, I spawned into a strange desert as a tiny pharaoh. Whoa, look at me. Wait, I only have six hearts? I immediately began chopping down all the dead wood trees around me. This hurts my hand, but I gotta do what I gotta do. Suddenly, I was attacked by a scarab that came out of the tree. It was small, but it packed a big punch. Yuck, get away from me, you little bug. I quickly killed the scarab and ate it. Eh, not the tastiest in all the lands. Then, without warning, a desert wolf pounced at me and began biting my limbs. Ah, I can't catch a break here, can I? I wanted to fight back, but there was too many of them. I had to run away. How dare you treat a pharaoh like this? I'll be back. I ran into a deserted looking building and stayed there for the night. On day two, I made a pickaxe to start mining some limestone. I wonder if limestone tastes like... Eh, probably not. Once I had enough limestone, I used it to craft some limestone tools, like a sword, pickaxe, and an axe. These are rad. While I was searching through some of the deadwood crates, I found a bunch of cloth scrap. I wonder what I can do with this. Guess I'll save it for later, just in case. While I was rummaging around, I couldn't help but wonder why I was here. Was I the newest pharaoh? Pharaoh Bronzo. Hey, that almost rhymes. I needed to find some sort of civilization. Maybe then I could get some answers. I set off for a long trek across the desert. As I was traveling, I was ambushed by the pack of desert wolves again. This time, you guys are toast. They were strong, but I was stronger, and I killed them all easily. That'll teach you to mess with a pharaoh. After getting payback on the wolves, I continued walking around when I spotted a group of desert rabbits in the distance. Ooh, that looks like dinner. I chased the rabbits down and killed as many as I could for their meat. Sorry guys, but my tummy's a rumbling. After that, I dug out a nice cave to settle down in for the night, crafted a limestone furnace, and fired up the rabbit meat. Down the hatch. Mmm, that was tasty. After I finished all of the meat, I grew up into a full-sized pharaoh. Whoa, I have 10 hearts now. This is awesome. On day three, I continued my search for civilization. Come on, there's gotta be something out here. And I was right. There was an entire desert oasis up ahead. Oasises have water. There must be civilization nearby. Um, excuse me. Hello? What do you... Oh, excuse me. How may I assist you? I am the next pharaoh. Take me to your village. Ha! Yeah, right. There hasn't been a pharaoh in hundreds of years. But I'll take you to my village anyhow. They'll judge for themselves. Great. Let's go before scarabs get us. On the way to the village, it became dark, and we ran into some skeletons wrapped up in gauze. What the heck are those things? They are forsaken. We must fight them if we are to live. We wasted no time and plowed the forsaken to dust. Ha <laughs> ha! Too easy. Let's keep moving. By days four and five, I had arrived at a village nested in the desert. Finally, civilization! As I walked the streets, I saw the members of a thriving community of Egyptians, each going about their daily tasks and lives. Wow, there are so many people here. Yes, indeed. When we work together, humans can accomplish great things. I was brought up to a little stand where my guide showed me how to use a spinning wheel with my cloth to make a linen thread and then a bolt of linen. Okay, but what do I do with this? The guide had me use the linen material materials to craft some wanderer cloth armor. Hey, what's that ringing sound? He looked very concerned. Barbarians. Barbarians? What are they doing here? He told me that these barbarians raid the village from time to time, taking the community's resources for themselves. Well, somebody has to do something about this. Bronzo, wait. I was already rushing into battle. The villagers put up a decent fight, but the barbarians were as fast as they were strong. I carved my way through the band of barbarians, driving them back and out of the village. Yeah, and stay out, ha <laughs> ha! You are quite the warrior, Bronzo. Allow me to express my gratitude. Please, follow me. I want to show you something. I was taken to a field of crops and was a little confused. You wanted to show me wheat? Wheat? No, 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 no. This is Emmer, our main source of food. I was taught how to use a quern, using the hand mill to grind down the emmer into a powdery flour. Turns out, when you add water to that, you can knead it into dough. We put the dough into a furnace and waited around for a while until a loaf of bread was finished baking. I had to try a piece. Wow, this is delicious. I thanked my Egyptian guide for his help and found a place to rest my head for the night. It was days six through eight, and it was time to leave the village. Thanks for everything, guys. I stumbled across a cave 
system and began to mine some iron. I smelted the iron into some iron ingots and made an iron tool set, such as a pickaxe and a sword. Now I'm ready for battle. Well, I spoke too soon because I ran into a stone warrior. You don't want to mess with me. I'm a pharaoh. I quickly defeated the stone warrior and it dropped some strange dirty items. Ew, Ugh, I may have to wash these. They might be worth something. After some adventuring, I left the mine and found another village. Oh no, it's being attacked by some undead thing. I tried to help, but it was too late. This undead pharaoh sent everyone into the underworld and then vanished. That's not good. I wonder who that was and what they want. I thought it was a good opportunity to collect some resources from the now abandoned village. Oh, this bed will be useful. On days nine through 10, as I was searching for a new home, I spotted a small oasis in the distance. Whoa, is that a mirage? No, that's real. As I approached the oasis, I found that it was teeming with plant life. This is the perfect spot for my new home. I started building a small farm and planted some emmer seeds I had gathered. This is a great start. Then I chopped down one of the nearby palm trees for wood. I was surprised to find that a small date fell from one of its fronds. Oh, guess I got a date with this date. That sounded better in my head. I chowed down on the date and it was delicious. I got to get some more of these. I used the palm tree wood I had gathered and some limestone to start building a small home. I even filled it with palm wood crates, limestone furnaces, and a comfy bed. A house fit for a king or a pharaoh. After building my house, I went searching for materials in a cave nearby. As I was exploring, I was attacked by a group of tarantulas. Ew, you guys are gross. The tarantulas put up a tough fight, but they were no match for me, and I killed them all with ease. Who's your daddy long legs now? When the tarantulas died, they dropped a bunch of string. So I gathered up some flint from the cave and was super close to having a working bow to defend myself. Now all I need is some feathers for arrows. Nighttime was approaching though, so I began my journey back home. But as I was approaching my base, I noticed a bunch of creepers lurking around. Oh no, this isn't good. I tried to lure the creepers away from my base without them exploding, but that was easier said than done. Whoa, whoa, Nelly. Unfortunately, most of them exploded and I had to fill up the holes they had made. I then placed torches around my base to deter future mobs and then hit the hay for the night. On day 11, I had an insane dream. I was in the field of reeds and someone came before me. It was King Tutankhamun himself. King Tut, is that you? Yes, Bronzo, it is. There is something I have to warn you about. What is it? Is someone or something in danger? It's my father. He's left the afterlife and is creating an army of the undead. So that's who I saw earlier. How can I stop him? The thing is, I'm not so sure yet. I know, I'll become the next Pharaoh and gain the influence of the people. Together, we can stop him. I won't let you down. What I witnessed next was pure horror. King Tut transformed into King Akhenaten and the world went dark and in flames. Let who down? You've already failed. <laughs> I've already begun forming my undead army. I promise I'll destroy you and free all of the people you've cursed. Just then, I woke from my nightmare. I better get to work. From days 12 to 15, I was fully awake and determined to get followers. So I went to a village to find villagers to join me. Come on guys, you need to follow me. No one at the village was listening to me. And somehow, through my anger, I made a sandstorm happen. Did, did you do that? Uh, yeah, 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 I did that. It was all me. The villagers began to talk amongst themselves. I thought I might have convinced them, but no, they still didn't believe I was the new Pharaoh. You'll see, you'll all see. That night, I got the chance to prove myself to the villagers, and that was because a band of mummies attacked the village. But I was able to kill the rest of the mummies, who were not as easy as they looked. We lost some of the villagers, but at least some of them survived. I then gathered all the surviving villagers and guided them back to the base so we could all start a new life together. As I walked away, I noticed a little Serval following me. Hey buddy, are you okay? That's a great idea. Wait, you need a name. I know, I'll name you Snowball. 
Snowball and the rest of the villagers followed me back to the base. From days 16 through 19, I took everyone back to the base and began making houses. I also started giving out occupations to the villagers. I hope you all enjoy it here. Snowball also needed a place to stay, so I made a tiny cat house. This looks comfy. I went back to the mines to find some iron so I could make an iron tool set and some iron armor. All these tools and armor should protect me well. I discovered combining my wandering clothing with the iron armor, creating desert armor. Now I really look like a true pharaoh. The arrow still needed feathers, so I asked Snowball for advice. Great idea, Snowball. Snowball helped me find some quail in a different oasis. Good looking out. Help me catch some. We were able to kill some quail for their meat and feathers, as well as collected their eggs. I then made an enclosure for the quails and threw some eggs, hoping some would hatch. Luckily, a few did. Wow, look at them go. From days 20 through 23, the village was attacked by assassins. How dare you attack this peaceful village? Prepare to die. I tried to fight them off, but it was difficult. One of the assassins even had a bow that could set things on fire. Hey, watch where you shoot that thing. Eventually, I killed the assassins and got Ra's bow. It can set anything I shoot on fire. I should watch where I aim this thing. <laughs> the villagers were eternally grateful for saving them. No problem, guys. It's what a good pharaoh is here for. They wanted to thank me by making a giant statue of me. By dyeing some linen, they were able to start on the legs. Wow, you guys are far too kind. I'll help with it too. Saving the village from a few assassins was great, but I needed a surefire plan to stop Akhenaten. I better start traveling and finding more clues. Before leaving, a villager gave me a camel so I could travel much faster. Thank you. I'll be on my way now. I was traveling from days 24 through 28 and a wild sandstorm began forming. Where is all this sand coming from? I can't see anything. I hate sand. With all the sand, I started losing my sense of direction and I got lost. I saw a nearby building and hid for some shelter while the storm died down. I spoke too soon because the building was home to some brigade and nomads. They were not happy with my intrusion and started attacking me. You wanna fight? Come get some. I used my new bow to set them on fire and they died a gruesome death. Ha <laughs> ha, fire beats armor. I was able to leave when I noticed my camel had been slain. No, that poor camel, poor me. Walking in this desert won't be very productive. Suddenly I was ambushed by more desert wolves. Not again, wait, take this dusty bone. Luckily, the dusty bone worked and I was able to tame the wolves. Though some of them just started attacking each other. I guess because they were hurting me? Yes, now I have a loyal wolf pack. Just then, King Tut reappeared and told me some bad news. Bronzo, you've come a long way, but the bad news is you went the wrong way. What? How so? You should be training, not looking for answers. Well, thanks for the guidance. And with that, I headed back home. And on days 29 to 33, Snowball began to feel replaced by the pack. No need to worry, Snowball. You're my best friend. I built a little house that could fit all the wolves inside. There, all done. Do you like it? One of the villagers had wolf armor and gave it to them as a gift. They fitted the largest wolf in the pack with a saddle so we could ride him. I mounted the wolf and began to explore. Let's see just how far we can go. During my joyride, a series of mysterious figures arose. Are those wraiths? They were super fast, but two hits killed them instantly. And when I defeated them, they dropped ectoplasm. Huh, this is weird, but that was a close one. Nice going, Wolfie. We then found an abandoned village Village. This place must have been raided by Akhenaten. I looked around and found a Thames bounty, a fishing rod that can catch rare fish. So I found it in an oasis and spent the rest of the day fishing and got some gold fish, as well as a bunch of tropical fish. On days 34 through 37, I made a beautiful aquarium for all my fish. All the villagers stood around the aquarium, admiring it. Glad you like it, guys. The aquarium reminded me of when I was an axolotl for 100 days and gave me some bad vibes since Steve kind of locked me up. I never want to be trapped in there again. When I finished being distracted, I noticed a leopard nearby. It pounced onto a villager and killed him. What? You killed one of my people. I fought the leopard and didn't hesitate to kill it. Ha <laughs> ha! Suddenly, a lot more leopards came. This battle wasn't over yet. Where are you all coming from? Whatever. You've come here to die. I outsmarted the leopards. Silly leopards. You never stood a chance against Bronzo. Oh. 
The villagers were so impressed with my skills, they all thanked me and gave me a bunch of dates. Thanks for all the food. These might come in handy later. On days 38 through 40, I traveled and found a great pyramid. Whoa, there must be answers in here. I better check it out. As I began to dig, I was attacked by some nomads. Back off, I'll light you on fire. And I did. I lit all the nomads on fire with my bow and remained victorious. Ha <laughs> ha, bronzo. I tried to enter the pyramid, but I had to light torches next to the doors. All of a sudden, Snowball came up to stop me. Well, it would be less dangerous if you went with me. We quickly made our way into the pyramid, but when we got inside, it was really dark. Hello, is anyone here? I regretted asking that because I was surrounded by wraiths. Ah, I should have known. This happens in movies all the time. Eventually, I killed the wraiths. I then continued down to the next lair, which was a maze filled with booby traps. Oh, poison, poison, poison. After going back and forth through the maze, I finally figured it out. Eventually finding the room with the pharaoh sarcophagus. Gotta be careful. This place must have more booby traps. By days 41 to 43, I had a sinking feeling in my stomach that things were about to go bad. I had realized that by placing torches around the sarcophagus, I could release the pharaoh's spirit. I'm finally free! Thank you! Can you help me find the right weapon to defeat Akhenaten? <laughs> Big mistake. Cleopatra betrayed me, so I began fighting against her and the mummies she had summoned. Why are you doing this? I helped free you. Oh, man, must She claimed that she wanted revenge for her death. Then take things up with Octavian. Not me, but I prevailed, eventually ridding this world of this now dead beauty. After she died, I gained 10 more hearts. Yes, now I'm even more powerful. I then started looting her tomb, and inside I found Nephi's Banishing, a sword that could double damage to undead foes. This will come in handy against Akhenaten. After looting, I left the pyramid and decided I needed to go back home. On days 44 through 49, the villagers continued on the giant statue in my honor, finishing up the torso and arms. We are almost finished, your honor. Thank you for this wonderful game. Gift. I will now continue with my journey. I headed towards a cave in search of diamonds. I need to upgrade all of my stuff right now. I found so many shiny diamonds that I could use for tools. So I quickly crafted a sword, axe, and pickaxe. I then carried them with me and headed out. But when I left the cave, I was met by a lion. Hello, traveler. I am Shu, the god of the wind. Then why are you a lion? I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. I want to challenge you in a race. If you win, I will grant you my speed. I needed Shu's speed to aid me with my battles ahead, so I agreed to his challenge. All right, you want to race? Meet me tomorrow at sunset. I then headed back home to rest and to come up with a strategy on how to win against a literal Egyptian deity. On days 50 through 53, I practiced my racing skills with Snowball in an attempt to win the challenge. I need to practice more if I'm going to beat the mighty lion. I needed to come up with a strategy in order to beat Shu, when suddenly I thought of a great plan. Aha, I have an idea on how I can win this race. If I use the alpha wolf in the race, then I could be 10 times faster than before and beat Shu. I can't say for now, Snowball. It's a secret, and you'll have to find out tonight at the race. <laughs> when it was sunset, I rode up on my alpha wolf, and Shu was waiting for me at the starting line. You ready to take this, L? You're racing with a wolf. That's cheating. How is this cheating? You're a lion, so I can't keep up with you. Fair enough. I'm still going to win, so I guess it doesn't matter. The race began. I was in the lead, but all of a sudden, I was ambushed by some bone storms. What the? I thought this was a race, not a survival test. See you later, loser. Cheater. Even worse, my wolf got distracted by the bone storms and died. No, you were the chosen one. After everything was settled, Shu felt bad for me and still granted me his power in the form of a necklace. It was a good race. Whoa, I can run so fast now. Look at me. Thank you so much. No problem. Now, Shu. <laughs> That's a good one, Shu. No, really, leave. I'm hungry and you're looking like a whole snack. And so that was the last time I'd come in contact with Shu.
On days 54 to 58, following my victory, the villagers finished off the statue in my honor. So I decided to surprise the workers. Hey guys, really love what you've been doing out here. And seeing as you've been working so hard, I wanted to give you guys a little something. Some emmer bread and dates for everyone. Just then, King Tut came from the horizon to talk with me. What are you doing here? I have traveled very far to bring you this. Here. Take it. A map? Where does this map lead to? It will take you to my father's face. You must leave. Now. I looked across to see the faces of the villagers around me. They looked worried, but I grabbed the map and thanked him. Thank you for bringing this to me. I looked back at the villagers and asked them if any of them wanted to accompany me on this journey. This mission's going to kill us all. There has to be a better plan. Deep down, I knew they were right. I couldn't force them to join up on this endeavor. I mean, I totally could, but I chose not to. I'll go by myself. That way, none of you will be subjected to the dangers that lie ahead. All right, it's your funeral, pal. The villagers began to work on a pyramid, which would act as my tomb, just in case. This, this is incredibly unnerving. It's gonna happen someday. Is that supposed to be comforting? I became really worried as I started to see more and more villagers plan my funeral, but I knew I must stay focused on my new journey as it is requiring great strength. Here, take this camel. It will help you with your long journey. Thank you, I'll take care of him. I set off on my new camel and followed the map. On days 59 to 62, I followed the map to some spiky mountains. And while I was there, I was attacked by hyenas. Stop laughing at me and fight honorably. After I finished defeating the hyenas, I found a chest with a sign on it. Beneath the monument lies riches beyond my wildest dreams. What does that mean? I opened the chest and found a golden date. I took a bite and wow. This is delicious! I need to find where I can get more! I decided to listen to the sign and looked for an entrance in the mountain. Soon enough, I found a huge cavern. The answer must be in here somewhere. Something was in here, but not what I hoped for. Giant cave centipedes came crawling towards me. This can't be happening! I knew the sign was a trap. Luckily, with Ra's bow, I was able to kill the arthropods. Since I was already so deep beneath the surface, I decided to mine some diamonds while I was there. I'll use these to start making diamond armor. On days 63 through 66, I ran into Ta, the creator god. What's up, Bronzo Bro? Did you enjoy my golden day? Did I? That was the best thing I've ever eaten. I'd do anything for some more. Anything you say? Ta offered to give me more golden dates in exchange for all the diamonds I mined. Seems like a pretty fair trade if you ask me. I was hesitant at first. There are few things more valuable than diamonds. Only maybe love, life, and friendship. But eh, who needs any of that these days? You got a deal. Here you go, good sir. I gave Ta all of my diamonds, and in exchange, he gave me Ta's decadence. Whoa, thanks, man. Ta explained how with decadence, mining iron now had a chance of dropping gold as well. I'm here. He's me mom's golden date recipe, a family secret. With this, you should be able to make as many as you like. Thank you so much, man. No problem, Joseph. Here. Dab me up, better soil. I gave Ta a righteous knuckle touch and continued on my way back home to my village. On day 67 through 70, I found a cave and went spelunking for some gold. Luckily, with Ta's decadence, I was able to get some just by mining iron. This is tubular. I love mining. I spoke too soon, though, because I was ambushed by a stone warden. Stay back, you pile of stones. I tried to fight off the warden, but he was far too powerful. He did a ton of damage. Whoa there. I wasn't strong enough to fight him, and I had to flee to save myself. That's it. I'm out of here. I headed back home to make some gold golden dates. Hello everyone. I come bearing gifts. I gave some golden dates out to my villagers and they loved them. The villagers were so thankful for the dates that they decided to finish the pyramid tomb in my honor and it came out amazing. Wow guys, this looks great. I can't wait to die so I can live there for eternity. After admiring the pyramid, I went back to the mines to find some diamonds so I could finish my diamond armor. Score! This should be just enough. While I was down in the mines, I also gathered up some obsidian so I could visit the nether. I ended the day by crafting my diamond armor. Ooh, I look so shiny. <laughs> On days 71 through 74, I decided to create a nether portal in hopes of finding Akhenaten. We must enter. I need to meet with Akhenaten in order to defeat him. Snowball felt unsafe, but still decided to join me. We entered the portal and immediately felt a wave of heat hotter than the desert. This place looks terrifying, but we must search through it. 
Good find! Let's go there! The fortress was filled with wither skeletons who did not seem happy that I was on their territory. It's about time you guys wither away! How, how was that one? Oh, that was bad! I fought them off, able to kill most of them. I searched some of the chests, and inside I found Ra's step, a ring that allowed me to run on lava. Check me out, Snowball! <laughs> I can run on lava! Along my journey, I ran into a strider who gave me some great advice. Hey, ugly looking fella, what are you doing here? That's so rude. Uh, anyways, I'm a strider and my home has been taken over by some dumb undead king. You mean Akhenaten? Is he here? I don't know. Probably. Us nether dwellers wish him to be gone. Well, have you come up with any ideas? Maybe I can stop him. Hmm, I think piglins may be able to help you there. I don't even have arms. Makes sense. Thanks for the help. My next mission was to search for a bastion remnant, but I couldn't find one. Keep looking, Snowball. But what do your cat eyes see? Unfortunately, with all the noise I was making, I attracted an unfriendly ghast. It shot explosive fireballs at us. Oh, no, 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 no. I got two choices. Hit those fireballs back or run. I've never been good at baseball, so I think I better get running. Let's get out of here, Snowball. Going on from days 75 to 78, Snowball and I continue to explore the nether when I finally found a bastion remnant. I don't want the locals to attack me, so I better make some gold armor. I set down a crafting table and got to work making some gold helmets for Snowball and I. And there we go. Looking spiffy, Bronzo. Oh, why, thank you, Bronzo. Just let me have this, Snowball. Just then, I found a piglin. I approached him and asked him about Akhenaten. Never speak that name again. It rings painfully on our ears. Every time I say Akhenaten, it hurts you? Yes. Okay, I won't say Akhenaten anymore. <sighs> I decided to ask the piglin to take me to the one in charge. You have a leader, right? Here in the bastion? Yes. May I see them? No. The piglin forced my hand. I had to use a forbidden strategy in order to continue my journey. Akhenaten, 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 Akhenaten. Fine, fine, okay, okay. I'll take you to our leader, just please. Stop saying it. Okay, but take me to your leader. The disgruntled piglin took me to his leader, the mutant hoglin. What do you know about Akhenaten? The mutant hoglin began to tell me the history of the nether. This place wasn't always like this, you know. We used to call this place the Aether, an expansive paradise that floated above the clouds. So what happened? Akhenaten was jealous of the beauty and majesty of this realm. In his spite and envy, he burned it all down. I asked the mutant Hoglin if he could help me defeat Akhenaten, but he refused. Vestiges of a time that has long since passed. Truth be told, ever since Akhenaten was summoned back to the overworld, life has never been better for us since the Calamity. I wouldn't want to ruin that. Can't you give me any help? The mutant Hoglin handed over eight blocks of gold for me to craft one enchanted golden date with. Well, thank you for what you could give. With the golden blocks from the mutant Hoglin in tow, Snowball and I went back through the portal, up to the overworld. On days 79 through 84, I woke up to the sound of horror. All the townspeople were frightened. What's going on out here? It was Akhenaten. He had summoned a horde of undead to destroy my village. I killed off as many of the undead as possible. But when I was finished, Akhenaten vanished. Unfortunately, some of the townspeople died, and the village was on fire. But I was able to stop the undead mob. Curse you, Akhenaten! You'll pay for this! Right at that moment, King Tut appeared. Tut, my dude, what are you doing here? Bronzo, if you, if you want, want to defeat, defeat my father, father you'll, you'll need, need to be, to be much, much bigger and stronger. stronger. But how? I'm running out of time here. Here, hold still. Whoa! I'm huge! I could be the next Mr. Olympia! Thanks, King Tut! Don't mention it. Seriously, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Unfortunately, King Tut couldn't stick around. I have to leave again before my absence is noticed. Take care, Bronzo. I helped the townspeople put out the fires and made the entrance to my home bigger so I could fit with my new size. By days 85 to 89, my window of time to find Akhenaten was closing. I need to find him, and fast! I traveled from village to village, looking for any clues I could find. 
Take these diamonds. I can only hope they will be of some use to you on your journey. Huh? Okay, thanks. What I thought was a one-off occurrence kept happening as I passed through villages. The people showered me with gifts. Everything from precious materials to delicious food. Word must be getting around that I'm the new pharaoh. Finally, I'm getting the respect I deserve. One of the villages I passed through needed help. They were having a problem with a husk infestation that kept endangering the villagers. Oh, that's awful. Is there any way I would be able to help? Do you know where the husks are spawning from? Yes, of course. But if you really want to go, you should take this. The villager gave me Montu's Blast, a bow that turns my arrow shots into explosions. I went to the area outside the town that the villager told me about and started mowing down husks. Just when I thought I was finished, I felt the sand quake beneath my feet. Oh my gosh, it's a mutant husk. I didn't think the fight would be anything I couldn't handle. Oh geez, flow on health, flow on health. No matter how many hits I landed, the mutant husk kept seeming to shake them off. That's when I noticed the local villagers were also joining in the fight. We finally defeated the mutant husk. And the villagers were so incredibly thankful, they let me keep Montu's bow. Awesome! Thanks, guys! From days 90 to 93, I was continuing my search for Akhenaten. Far in the distance, over the desert dunes, I found another village. Oh no, that village doesn't look like it's in good shape. I raced into the village that I can now see was in ruins. There was only a few people left, and they looked worse for wear. What in the world happened here? Are you guys okay? Our village was attacked by raiders, undead wearing bronze armor. Were they acting alone? No, they were led by an undead king of some sort. Just then, a familiar voice rang out. Bronzo. King Tut, boy, am I glad to see you. Do you know anything about this attack? An attack? Look around, everything is destroyed. Ah, I see. How unfortunate. It seems like you've made the wrong choice by coming here. What do you mean? King Tut began walking around me, and I immediately felt like something bad was about to happen. You seriously think that defeating my father was a good idea? Of course, it was part of the plan, and I needed to defend my people. Well, my friend, big mistake. King Tut was acting incredibly strange. I grew with confusion and knew what he was about to tell me was not good, but I had to defend myself. King Tut, I don't understand what you're telling me. Wasn't this your idea? Perhaps it was, perhaps it wasn't. We will have to find out. What? King Tut then pulled out a staff and used it to send the villagers to the afterlife. Stop, why are you doing this? You think you can just come here and save everyone? King Tut was about to send me to the afterlife. I had to do something before he killed me. <laughs> you are weak, my friend. Wait, I have something for you. Oh really, some sort of gift? Something better. I pulled out my sword as King Tut got closer to me to see what I was about to give him. Then I slashed him across the face. Akhenaten, what are you doing here? Akhenaten grew with rage and began to fight me with his sword. I will destroy you. You tricked me. I will not let you get away with this. We battled against each other, and just as I was about to defeat him, he vanished. Be careful when choosing your battles. Till we meet again. Hey, come back here! I knew this was only the beginning of my fight against Akhenaten. He was now planning his revenge, and I was determined to kill him. It was days 94 through 96, and I was finally back home. And so I got to work and made that enchanted date that I was putting off. This should come in handy against Akhenaten. Now I was ready to find out where the map King Tut gave me led. I wish I could be home a little longer, but I gotta do what I gotta do. I set out for the desert, and then eventually into a jungle. What's a whole jungle doing out here? Venturing through, I ran into a family of pandas and showed them my map to see if they could guide me. What do you mean I'm nowhere near my destination? Well, thanks for the help anyways. As I was leaving, a tiger attacked the pandas, so I had to intervene. Go find food somewhere else, you tiny tiger. I defeated the tiger and made my way back to the desert. On days 97 through 98, I reached the final destination of the map King Tut gave to me. It led to Montu, the god of war. This reminds me of when I was a god for 100 days, which you guys should watch that video after this episode is done. I had to know why the map led here after all this time, so I asked Montu. So, you're the new pharaoh. It's about time you made it here. What's the deal? I thought this map would lead me to Akhenaten. You are not ready to defeat the great Akhenaten. 
Plus, only I know how to defeat him. Well, you have to tell me. This entire world is in grave danger. You don't think I know that already? Anyways, I'll tell you if you can pass my final challenge. Defeat 100 undead foes before the sun rises. Only 100? <laughs> Sheesh, that sounds easy enough to me. I was a little bit wrong. It wasn't an easy task, but I fought through the night and killed exactly 100 undead, just like Montu asked me to. I thought I was going to fail, but then I remembered all the countless lives stolen by Akhenaten, and it pushed me to succeed. The sun is rising soon. I better get back to Montu. When I returned, I showed Montu all the remains I required. He was kind of grossed out. That's enough proof. I think I'm gonna barf. Now tell me how to defeat Akhenaten. You are a worthy pharaoh. The only way to defeat him is by striking him in his undead heart with Nephthys' banishing. That's it? Super easy! He will be dead in no time. The hard part will be getting close enough to him. Here's a compass. This will lead you directly to him. Thank you, Montu. It was time to get back home and say my goodbyes to the village. On day 99, I got back to the village of my people and had to say my farewells. All right, everyone. I will be leaving to finally battle Akhenaten and rid this world of his evil. But before I go, I need everyone to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and comment down below what I should be for my next 100 day challenge. Now I had to do the hardest thing ever. Say goodbye to Snowball. This isn't goodbye forever. I'll be back soon. It's too dangerous. I don't want to take any chances losing you. I then followed the compass, and it took me to the biggest Egyptian palace I had ever seen. It was finally day 100, and I found Akhenaten's base. It's time to face my destiny. I confronted my enemy and peacefully asked him to die again. I mean, it's the circle of life, and it would really help us all out. I can never die. Not anymore. You should join me. Join me, and we can rule for eternity. It's not natural for humans to live eternally. But we are gods. Uh, not really. I don't want to go into all the technical mumbo jumbo, so let's just fight. This conversation scene is taking too long anyway. So be it. We started the battle, charging at one another. It was fast, and I had my trick bows. I also ate my enchanted date and got a bunch of effects from it, but I needed to use Nephi's banishing to strike him in the heart. However, he kept avoiding my attacks. Can you just stand still? Why, so you can use your pink sword on me? Never eat lightning. Akhenaten used his powers on me, like shooting bolts of lightning and summoned strange spikes out of the ground. Is that the best you got? Oh, 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 you have no idea how powerful I can be. Just then, Snowball showed up and wanted to help. Snowball, this is no place for you. <laughs> oh, a cat. I must worship you. Somehow it worked. Snowball distracted Akhenaten and gave me the perfect chance to stab Akhenaten through the back and into the heart. I won. I saved Egypt. Yes, let's go.